thank you again to everybody there. Again, let's get into what's coming up next. I love it. Every time I get to go next, next, next. Lunch ka samay hai, par hamaar li nahi hai. Hamaar li baut kuch aane wala hai. So let's get straight into what's coming at India in sync. Musically. Discussion about sync placement opportunities for music in film, TV, and the new world these days, OTT along with video games. Joining us are speakers and of course, a master moderator who will share the entire session. Let's please welcome first our speakers, singer, songwriter, renowned music supervisor for films like Gully Boy and series like Netflix, The Big Day. Please welcome Ankur Tiwari. Along with him, it's going to be founder of Misfits Inc. Management Agency and label with a liber library of indie music for sync confirmed. And that is Sabine Shetty. Along with the two is going to be Anisha Gaba, who did join us earlier with a question. We'll be back here as a as a speaker. Uh, New Business Sync and Licensing India and SARC, Warner Media Group. Can, and along with the three is going to be uh, Petal Chandog, advocate and partner, Trust Legal. And of course, the moderator, Sachin Chair, please welcome managing partner, Tinat, Edoji Rafael Pereira. And over to you, wishing you a very happy World Music Day. Uh, Rafael, are you with us? If yes, give me a yay. Yay. Yes, I heard that. All right, over to you. And uh, I can't wait for this very interesting, interesting session. So let's bring about every India in sync together. Let's go. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mitin. Uh, you brought, uh, you're bringing out the the energy um, uh, during this lunch period, and uh, I, I must say we've got a great panel um, of of speakers here. I'd um, I I think uh, Anisha has also joined. Anisha, uh, just so you know, your video is off, but I, I know you've joined in. Um, I have joined it, but I think my video is off by someone, the host. Okay. Um, so wh while we get that fixed, let, let me uh, uh, thank uh, thank Ankur, Alec, uh, Petal, Savana, and Anisha for, for joining in here. Um, like Mitin said, we're going to be talking about sync uh, placements and licenses um, of music in film and TV, uh, the, uh, the world of digital OTT, and maybe we'll touch upon video games and esports uh, a, a bit as well. Um, I'd, I'd like to first uh, uh, open it up uh, to Alec and uh, bring in Alec uh, to kick off the discussion uh, with, I think, somewhat of a, a basic question of, uh, you know, what is the world of uh, sync, uh, sync opportunities and what's the role that a music supervisor plays internationally um, and um, how is that changing today? Okay. Hi. Hi, Raphael. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you and um, happy World Music Day to everybody. Welcome to everyone on the panel. Uh, thanks for having me. So, um, yeah, we're talking about sync and uh, like Ankur, who's on the panel, I'm um, uh, a music supervisor. That's the, the job uh, I got into uh, really through passion for music and also wanting to help filmmakers tell stories uh, through their film, but with on the music side. So what I do, what is a music supervisor is I can obviously do what a music director does, which is a, I think a phrase that only I've heard about come across in India. So a music director is working with a composer, a producer, a lyricist, a singer, and, and putting together a song uh, from scratch. Whereas a music supervisor can do all that and a music supervisor can also work with this, this new frontier called sync, synchronization, putting an existing song onto um, a piece of film. So it's, it's, it's very simple, but also it's uh, very intuitive. Uh, I feel it's, it's very creative, especially when you're looking at a bigger picture of a movie or uh, an OTT series, or even if you're looking not just at one brand film, one com TV commercial, but if you're looking at the brand in general. So how do you help the bigger picture? How do you help have the music become a character in what you're doing, become, become a tool for the brand? 
So then you need to think about strategy. You need to think about the texture of the music, the feeling, the genre, the style, what will fit into the universe of the script of the movie, uh, what kind of types of music, what kind of types of singer will, will do that. Or for the brand, what kind of music are you using to targeting your audience? So it can become very um, involved and very in depth and very uh, creative, but also it can be a simple, my job can be as simple as a brand or a client comes to me and gives me a YouTube link and just tells me we're looking for this song. We want to license it for this usage for us. Can you help us to do that? So there's very little creative work in there, but I have to go out and uh, find the owners of the song who owns the publishing side, who owns the recording, the master side. And I, I um, have a budget, hopefully, from the brand. I get um, ballpark prices. I negotiate on their behalf. And I make sure a, a secure license is in place, secure meaning from a legal point of view that everybody is protected. Wonderful. So that, that's really my job in a, a large nutshell. Well, uh, thank you for uh, summing that up. And um, I know it's great that you brought up both the masters and the publishing side. I, I think, you know, that's something that we, we should uh, focus on uh, during this discussion. And I think that's where we can bring in uh, Petal in uh, a bit later um, on the discussion. But I, 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 Ankur, I'd like, to, I'd like you to talk, uh, talk to us about uh, your journey from being, uh, let's say, a music composer in a commissioned work or commissioned work for hire model, uh, to now being able to flourish as a singer songwriter who keeps his rights while also manages to to sync uh, a song and get a placement. Uh, sorry, just would you repeat that, like as, as a journey from from you as a music composer in the traditional. Yep commissioned work, work for hire model where you lose uh, all rights except, you know, mm -hmm. being associated with the work uh, to now today where you can be a singer songwriter, keep your rights and also have the benefit of syncing the song to a film or a series or a game. Uh, yeah, firstly, uh, every, hello to everyone and happy World Music Day to everyone. Alec uh, really well put that. Uh, I hope I can get that recording of what you said. Because it, you know, it answers that question: what a music supervisor does in a very nice, uh, nicely worded manner. Uh, as a as a composer, the world in India is changing very rapidly and for the good. Uh, the copyright law uh, has changed since two thousand twelve. At least we are uh, in greener pastures now. Uh, and I feel uh, it's very interesting. I have been an independent musician since since 1998 and since uh, it uh, when it didn't kind of make any sense to be an independent musician you were not making any money there were no gigs there were no venues uh, there were no festivals uh, i don't know why i did what i uh, started doing then uh, but uh, slowly as time has changed and uh, the laws are coming into place uh, interesting projects are coming into place the whole film industry is kind of getting restructured with the entry of the digital world, with the entry of streaming music, with the uh, entry of uh, the OTT platforms. Uh, it has changed quite a lot. Earlier, uh, when I started making music, it was all about uh, either self-releasing your work by printing your own tapes or printing your own CDs and handing it out to friends if you were an, an independent musician to, or getting signed by uh, a label uh, that will take away all your rights. Uh, they will give you a token money that you pretty much probably will end up spending in recording the album. Uh, make some money uh, doing live gigs. Uh, hope that somebody from the mainstream music scene, which is primarily the music scene, the movie scene, or the spiritual religious music scene spots you. Uh, and then uh, you uh, record with them and you make more money doing live gigs, uh, which has rapidly changed since uh, the digital world has come in. And now uh, it makes a lot more sense to keep 
uh, your publishing and your master with you because multiple opportunities uh, with music supervisors in our country around the world uh, help you place your work uh, in ad films in movies in uh, uh, shows uh, and different forms in uh, in different kind of brackets right from sync in films to be used in trailers in uh, you know in promotional material uh, it's been happening in the advertisement world in india for a while uh, but it's good to see it kind of permeate through and through now in all mediums so it's exciting it's exciting times for uh, both mainstream musicians and independent musicians so as a follow up to that uh, can you tell us how much the needle has really moved uh, in terms of uh, mu- uh, commissioned music that is uh, commissioned for a specific requirement to music placements of uh, from an existing catalog uh, in india and if you could maybe specify for ads and then for film and tv and video games as i said for ads it's been happening for a while a lot of uh, advertisement films have uh, in the golden period of advertising when creativity was like you know shooting off the roof people were using music very very interestingly uh, and you have seen that happen through uh, the last decade probably with films recently you have started seeing directors uh, enjoying uh, themselves a little more with music we have always been a uh, very musical in our storytelling uh, and the directors have always in india have had a tradition of using music very creatively having said that tradition can also work against you because there was always this way of like you know one music director getting the whole project and doing everything f- uh, for the movie uh, f- which included the score which included the songs everything uh, with the way the rights were uh placed with the major labels and how much it would cost usually from top to bottom the movie would be carpeted with original music uh, which was very interesting but since the laws have changed and things have changed uh that has changed as well uh, uh people now the newer directors a newer breed of directors uh, are more experimental with the way they're using the music uh they don't they're trying to break traditions uh, sometimes it works really well sometimes it's good to go with the tradition depending on the project uh, they have been using different music directors for the same project different people doing the score and different people uh, making the songs then different people doing the score different people making the songs and then have a bunch of songs that are licensed to you know raise the level of the sequences in the film uh, and it's uh, it's quite exciting even like cover versions uh, of songs being done interestingly uh, the remix era completely messed it up but uh, there were some interesting films in which people used cover versions of songs really really interestingly and almost introduced some older songs to a newer generation uh, and took the catalog uh, forward So that's a that's a great note to bring Anisha in on and uh, Anisha you've been with uh, a major Indian label and now you're with a major international label uh, and Ankur just spoke about uh, the remix era reworks uh, things like that so what what do you look at uh, we've heard from the music supervisors what do you look at before uh, you know granting a license uh, of a track from your catalog um, Yeah. So uh what i feel is like i agree with uh, uncle yes uh, it totally depends on the story and obviously it's the job of the supervisor to bring in uh, the music which fits well with the music fits well with the storyline and obviously it has to make sure that the song works like whether you're using the original composition or whether you're using the uh, cover version but yes it definitely enhances it uh accord- like how I think it was a while back where people were not aware, aware about the sync licenses but in this uh today's time where there are a lot of societies the bodies are coming in the uh, you know front line and they are completely telling us about the compositions and the publishing and what rights do we have to give when it comes to the sync uh, license the kind of there are a lot of factors that uh, you know determine how much and what is 
uh, required for the placement and also from a label, whether it's major or any other else, what rights we are going to issue. Uh, depending on obviously the type of visual media from a video, whether they are taking on the social, whether they are taking on the digital, or they are taking to the blockbuster film or to the OTT of the world these days. And also the duration, there are a lot of budgets of the production basis on which we decide whether you know it's going to make justice to us because as a label coming, whether it's Indian or international, there are labels where we have a certain relation with the uh, artists and the producers where it's not only that, there is a very misconception just to clear it out where people feel why, you know, the things fees are so high. Uh, it's better, you know, a lot of people keep have that thought in it. It's great, way much cheaper than using the old track. But what, according to me, coming from this industry and spending over the years, what I feel is that there is a place for every kind of music, uh, you know, in sync licenses. And whether the, if just the song is right for the scene, ad, uh, campaign, or a project, that's all that matters. So if the factors which determine the sync placement, which supervisors are in the best place to understand that, yes, this is going to do the justice uh, to it, but it also sync placement actually drives awareness for the label. So what I, according to feel, it's not only a win-win situation for the label or a major, uh, you know, for the music, but also uh, when the song, which is a popular uh, hit already, you must have seen those songs which fit well to the situation because as a layperson, you can connect to those tracks, you know, and that's how the project also becomes, and the music becomes a crucial part of the uh, project altogether. So we're giving an example, like I said, that the type of visual, uh, you know, how you're going to sync the music with the uh, audio visual, that is really important. Obviously, the budget of the production depends from zero to millions and obviously the region because people are looking for when it comes to the film, they are usually looking for in perpetuity license. But for a label, it is very, very important to know what region you are looking for the licensing. Reason being because there are certain rights when we acquire as a label, we may make sure that yes, this territory is allowed, this ter territory which may not have that kind of a right that a label have acquired during that period of time. And having said that, the demand of the song and the popularity of the artist, it definitely plays a game in the, uh, you know, the sync business altogether. Uh, the nature of the usage, whether it's the, uh, you know, the, the, from the quick background music to the opening credit, it plays it. And supervisor would be in a definite uh, place to help the label or make understand. Though obviously being a label, we can definitely help with some certain suggestions, the song of that era, which goes well with the, uh, you know, the situation. And it helps the previous, um, you know, the a lot of sync licenses in the past, which was issued and have resulted really well even for the project and also for the music. Like I said, it goes hand in hand. So if the platform or you can say uh, if there is a sync placement, it, it definitely drives awareness. So small percentage, even of a small percentage of the viewer that hear your song in a film or a TV show will pick up their phones to, you know, to YouTube it or to do Shazam to know about the track, right? And the track when it all it's already big when people use it in the trailer or even in the film they clearly click with that and then that's how the interlink happen and that's what the sync business is all about though what i feel like i've already said it uh, you know according to me for the supervisor or you can see the upcoming uh, composers make a song that stands on its own as an instrumental, you know, make a song, it shouldn't totally depend on the lyrics because it's not necessarily that the entire original song is required. Like Uncle clearly said, uh, you know, they Krishna, make the cover version. I'm going to come back to you on that note, but just before that, I want to bring in Petal and uh, then Savana as well uh, on this. Uh, Petal, if you can, uh, you know, we, we've heard... Um, We've heard from the music supervisors. Uh, we've heard uh, from the licensor side um, as well now. And 
Um, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the hurdles or challenges while negotiating these agreements, these contracts, closing them? Um, I know Alec also mentioned that uh, a part of his role is uh, negotiations, but uh, making sure the the rights, the territory, the term is rightly worded, things like that. What do you see as some of the hurdles uh, that you face today in India and maybe um, uh, could go away like, going forward in India? Right. So uh, thanks, Rafael, for the question. Uh, firstly, I really wanted to share that, uh, you know, with the OTT uh, really uh, having a rise in our country and we see that uh, nowadays we don't have live gigs and we don't have live performances. So I really feel that, uh, you know, this entire aspect of sync placement is going to play a very, very important role in the coming few years. And uh, definitely there are going to, you know, uh, be specific laws also, uh, you know, regarding this. Um, regardless of that, uh, having, uh, you know, understood that the idea and concept of sync placement is something that's come from the US, right? Because they are very protective and very, very conscious of their rights as singers. And uh, I think that has also started happening now in our country where, uh, you know, singers and artists are really, really conscious of their own rights. And they really want to protect it for, you know, times to come, for years to come. And uh, while we also, you know, uh, negotiate for our uh, clients who are artists and singers, we really see that at least the underlying intellectual properties that are there, you know, as authors remains with them. So uh, definitely, I think what Anisha touched upon that uh, when we are looking into these sync licenses, um, a lot has to do with the, you know, the royalties that we are looking at, the license fee that we are looking at, because uh, that's where, you know, they are going to commercially be benefited. Um, of course, terms are something which uh, is again, a very, very important role that is that, that it plays. And um, uh, things like, uh, you know, even receiving the royalty is one uh, aspect that now um, is still is in a very, very gray area, because even though the provisions under law under the Copyright Act says that, you know, it's only the singer or their legal heirs and the society, uh, which is entitled to receive the royalty, but still, uh, when these singers, you know, they, uh, when they give away their rights, or they wave off their rights to these music labels, then there's a um, you know, there's a disparity between law and the contracts that they've executed. Uh, so these are the kind of legal hurdles that, uh, you know, specifically that we go through when we see that is still matter which is pending before um, specifically the high court that I'm part of. So I won't really mention, uh, you know, say anything specifically on that. Um, but definitely, I think um, when uh, while negotiating, the major aspect that comes into play is uh, their rights, uh, their right to receive the royalty. And uh, I think uh, the kind of, uh, you know, um, the kind of fame that even, even, even as singers they get, you know, through these placements, sing placements. Uh, because uh, just to give an example, you know, the 1951 song that we heard in Ludo, you know, so none of us would have heard that song before. Uh, but because of that song, uh, I think the movie also gained an attention and even the song, you know, yet again, it gained attention after so many years. So uh, those are the kinds of, uh, of course, there's a lot of creativity that goes into it and things like that. But I'm sure the singer or whoever the owner was of that song would have, you know, really gotten a lot of royalties for that song now. Um, so I feel, yes, uh, major aspects are, of course, the term, the royalty, um, your underlying rights that you have. And uh, yes, uh, I think uh, it's not a set format ever. Um, each negotiation that we go through is different from, you know, one another. So we can never say that, you know, there's a template, even though uh, what we've seen in the past is that uh, a lot of music, uh, music albums and singers have executed templates, you know, which is why now we have a lot of problem dealing with it uh, when they're all in disputes, unfortunately. So I feel that each issue should be taken up as, uh, you know, as an individual case and should be negotiated that way. And then, uh, you know, accordingly, a contract should be executed for that. Yeah. So I, I'm with you. I think we can talk a whole day about how we need to track royalties that are being paid for sync and who, who actually has the final say 
um, on whether a sync was done and how much was apportioned for the sync uh, towards the publishing, things like that. Those, those, are, those are some macro level issues um, there. Um, but I, I'd like to bring in Savina at, at this point. And uh, the, uh, Savina, I'm, I'm coming to you with this question. It's, uh, is, I, I don't know, I, I feel over the past two years, sync has really become a buzzword. Um, and artists are now looking for sync placements. They're, they're looking, may not be, they're looking in all different directions. I don't know if, uh, if there is one place to particularly look, but as a representative, as a manager of artists, uh, how much are you actually relying on um, sync as a source of income uh, for your artists? Hi, Rafael. Hi, thank you for having me personally. Uh, coming to the Seven, I think you'll have to be a bit louder. I'm, I'm not sure if it's only me. Okay. And, yeah. Can you hear me now? A bit better, yes. Okay. Thank you for having me. Uh, happy World Monkey Day. Um, coming to your question, um, honestly speaking, like we started two years back, and uh, we were focusing more on all this uh, IPR registrations and all this registration that required for the artist that hygiene practice, which usually should be done regardless. Uh, while then, back then, we were not relying much on sync as such because majorly the revenues were coming in from live shows and some branded gigs and such opportunities and such for like that. But coincidentally, because of the pandemic, fortunately or unfortunately, you can say there's a shift which has happened and um, we saw a lot of OTTs and all these platforms booming in and you know, there's been uh, growth in the opportunities for such placements and uh, majorly for the non non film or independent artists because I think it's kind of easier to clear and mostly independent artists own the rights and everything is with among themselves and there are no multiple shares and like not to reach out to. Uh, but it's over the past two years that I've been seeing this uh, right happening two three years at least. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's a major share of revenue uh, in terms of the artist income. While in the past, maybe say around 70, 80% of the revenue was coming from live shows and 20% maybe from the branded uh, commitments as such. Uh, now I could say, uh, while there are no live shows happening, but there's a hybrid model that is coming in where almost all of your digital streams and everything have a layer of sync uh, licensing to it. Uh, so we could say right now with the movie placements and stuff, it's about 15, 20% of the, of the place revenue that is coming in from the uh, from the direct placements in movies and films and stuff like that. But the other 30, 40% of the revenue is still coming in from the digital streams and branded streams that we are doing. So, and we are hoping obviously that it goes up in the near future. Uh, that's great. It's, it's, it's great that you brought up the sync angle and the virtual stream. Uh, I think about yeah. approximately a year ago, we were really debating if a virtual stream was a sync license, if we'd be, uh, we'd have to go through the whole rigmarole of obtaining a sync license uh, for, for virtual performances. Um, I'd like to bring in uh, An Anisha back at, at, in, at this point. Uh, Anisha, what have you seen over the past year uh, as a licensor uh, of music? Have you seen a lot of requests for uh, clearances pre and post uh, for virtual events, music being used in virtual events? Absolutely. I think the entire business uh, went virtual at that period of time where people were just doing concerts and since obviously for those rights, they were not expecting that they have to get those rights clear because of the social media has the rights and all of that. But when it comes to the branded activity, when it comes to the uh, you know concerts and events, usually when it goes on ground, there is a PPL. But now when it comes to virtual, then obviously label and a publisher comes in the picture where they need to clear those rights from the label. And yes, there were a lot of requests coming in, but over the years, what I have seen, yes, last year, it was like every other day there is a request coming in because people want to go, uh, you know, virtual and online with obviously supporting the COVID and the pandemic, which we were uh, at that period of time and even now. But I think uh, we have learned from last year a lot, considering the fact that the virtual event, we like I said, that obviously as an audience, if I look at it, we were still not prepared, you know, to go virtual. And there, 
brands have really have must have seen that era where you know they must have tried going virtual but yet the audience is not ready for it however what i feel is knowing we are still in the pandemic and looks like the situation is not going to go normal and this is the new normal for another 6 to 8 months at least so right now i think people are still getting prepared uh you know they know that this is the new normal and now the brands have come up with the strategizing in a fashion where uh, you know they can reach out to the right audience they can reach out to the people instead of just creating uh, you know the virtual event but the strategy has to be clear whether there is a message to be conveyed or whether there is just bringing the community together of the author or the fan or it's just giving the user experience so that strategy needs to be very well in place understood uh, and now this is a uh, uh, my last let's say business or market oriented question before i come to some of the creative questions uh for ankur alek and uh, and savanai uh but essentially a, a question that there are like all, all of you to address is uh, where where are we uh, has the indian market in terms of sync come come of age have we matured as a market and i i don't want to say in comparison to the west because i i don't know if any any real market can in this regard because you have your blanket license markets and then you have your the kind of your uh, free or voluntary license markets um so i i don't want to make a comparison there but i re- i really want all of you to uh, ad- address this question on whether india uh, has come of age uh, as a sync market and uh, is there a lot more grow- growth and maturity to be gained here maybe uh, ankur if you could uh, if you could uh, kick that off uh yeah definitely there's a i feel that there is a it's a very interesting emerging market at the moment but i would feel that it's not only india it's worldwide india definitely is the flavor of the season everywhere in the world uh whether you see it in mainstream hollywood whether you see it in uk whether you see it in india uh so it's uh i feel for artists it's a good time to reach out to music supervisors overseas as well uh labels to see how they can like sync their uh you know that uh, their content overseas as well uh including in india uh and i feel it's th- it's a very interesting time for artists in india and labels in india with the material that they own i i completely agree with ankur i think this is the time we have to make the music we have to make music travel or uh, you know travel across the globe and people are aware about and that yes the indian music is celebrated all over the world and it's just time we need to open up a little bit and hence there are international uh, labels coming here and in fact not only the international labels but yes the platform there is a scope which is opening up a lot uh with respect to the sync opportunities and the sync placement not only as a blanket license to be given or even uh you know having the artists providing them the live concerts and anything but now coming with the virtual world which we are at right now there is gaming opportunities which is open up where you know you can have yeah yeah, yeah. Um, you know uh, like, i mean any environment can be created. yeah one second anisha this sharin could you mute oh, yourself thank you sorry anisha yeah, could you take that to- rewind a little and come back <laughs> yeah thank you so much thank you i'm so but sorry like that, no 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 that's okay so what i feel is that yes it is very important for india or to you know make the music travel outside india as well and uh, which is not yet promoted and like uh, i think tiral has already given a best example so far of ludo which has gone to the festivals and all of that and that song was of 50s and how it bring you know in the picture and in fact outside india we have seen coming with this short video platforms and even the gaming apps which they would like to use those tracks which was not uh, used it i think those era whether legend is always legend what i believe is that yes trends keep on changing but there is always always a requirement for the music throughout whether it's the melody whether it's the upcoming trends but you have to make sure that you know making it 
the growth wise yes you have to make sure as a composer what coming from uh, not a composer or a creative side but from the business side but those songs which has a melody is going to work for a lifetime you know no matter what if whether you're making the lyrics go well whether you're making the instrumental go well when you are creating a music you need to ensure that yes that music needs to be celebrated throughout in perpetuity so that you will also keep getting the artists keep getting the royalties all over so when the music is getting created it is going to be celebrated at that period of time and that the reason high profile artists they know what works and they know that what is going to work considering rd woman or you can say uh, you know uh, linkin park giving an example from the international market they know what music will keep on playing throughout the uh, you know uh lifetime no matter what generation whether it's gen z whether it's millennial whether it's old generation they will have that melody uh, uh, all across the music that's what i believe in yeah well, and there is a growth over that. Uh, that that's well put i think uh, you've emphasized every time you spoke what what, what i've heard is uh, you know the long tailing um, long tailing and discovery of music uh, sync is a great a great way um to both long tail uh, a song as well as to discover new music um i'll, I'll come to alec alec uh, if you could also you you've you've worked i know you've worked with with clients and brands here in india um and you're working in other international markets so how uh, while you address my previous question if you could also let us know how the markets compare or how does india uh, as a market compare uh i think there's uh optimism I wouldn't say pessimism but things things that I hope will get better the optimism is here right in front of us um we have for example um uh I think better and better people representing the the the, the big labels here and understanding sync and on the music side I think it's good it's it's developing right I think we need more music supervisors um because these are the people who are um neutral they're we're in the middle but we're not middlemen doing deals that can be uh that should be pushed out or or try to uh, avoid for saving money or something we're actually creative but we're able to um hopefully put ourselves in a position of trust with the filmmakers so the thing where uh, so we have also like this uh I'm very happy that Cobalt are now in India through Tanki and Atul. Uh somebody I know Rajat is uh, just started at Sony Publishing. I think these are all really really good signs. Um I'm looking forward hopefully to work with uh, Anisha uh Warner. Actually I need to talk to you after this. Sorry, after this panel so if you can send me your number or something. Sure, we can connect uh, offline, yeah. Uh, I was wondering why Anisha had to leave early now I know. <laughs> So on this side I think everything is it's going in the right direction I'm I'm happy I can compare it to uh 3 4 years ago that's how long I've been uh interested in India and and coming here and trying to develop my skills my work my business in India where I see that the improvement has to come in in line with keeping the progress uniform and together is from the clients quite quite uh honestly i i feel there isn't that, that much understanding about what we do about what is sync about why it in what situations could it be better than um more useful more productive than a compo- composition if you're doing a composition just because you think you have more power over how the music will sound and more ability to take the rights then you're not thinking at all in the game you know that filmmaking is still it's a business i understand that marketing it's a business but it's also a creative pursuit and that has to come into balance and uh i'm so i'm not talking about anyone here around the table or anyone from before i'm not making any big judgments i'm just telling you because i work in other markets also yeah i can compare but i don't have the in-depth experience of someone like ankur who i would defer to but the, these are how i see things i think i think the clients they really are, are lagging i think they really composing is like their crutch 
and and that, that they go to and it's fine but you know the conversations i have here that's hidden with a kind of false confidence the conversations i have with directors around the world australians british um americans french russians is like oh god yeah i'm so glad you're here because you know this whole music thing i find it so difficult and and thank you for helping so i'd love to see a bit more of that conversation here i'm not saying in any way that I'm trying to position myself as a star or as, as but that's my job you know that's what I do that, and it's to help the labels and to help the artists but also to help the filmmakers and I feel like the the labels the publishers they all understand now what I do what we do sorry uncle and how we can help and how what we can bring to them and how we can help position their music in people's minds who are who are decision makers but I'm, I'm still feel that has to happen in more than just a few notable cases in the whole film and, and marketing uh, industries. Um, and I, I'm going to come because you, uh, I promised even before the last question, I promised we'll come back to the creative part. But I, I, I promise you I've got a good question lined up <laughs> for that. Um, before that, Southern I um, and uh, Petal earlier spoke about some of the hurdles, you know, uh, thinking uh, the song, and this is a creative lead up, by the way, uh, but uh, what are some of the reasons that you've seen, let's say in the past uh, year or two, where you mentioned uh, a song will not get synced, or will, uh, you, someone has a creative interest for a song, they feel it's right, uh, but they're not able to, to go out and secure that placement. Um, well, in my honest opinion, obviously, Uncle and Alec would be better, uh, you know, to answer your question here. But in my experience, obviously, like what I've seen is, uh, like Anisha and Alec pointed it out, there's a lack of information and knowledge about uh, from the client side of what exactly they really need in terms of what kind of licenses and uh, stuff like that. Uh, and also there are very many variables come into play when you're producing or like, you know, uh, identifying the music as to who holds the right to how you're going to produce the music and stuff like that. So budgets, budgets also come into play then in the question like you know how how much budget do the client choose? what about on the artist side uh, uh seven uh, you, you mentioned on the the client side there is a lack of information and we even the supervisors may not uh, be able to find uh, you know the rights owner information but what about on the artist side are artists aware what should artists be aware of uh, things like that and um, after you petal if you can uh, also elaborate a bit more so that artists know what uh, you know the difference on the master side the publishing the performers right things like that yeah so even from the artist side there are times where uh, we've been asked like for example uh, there was a recent show which you were working for and you were asked to uh, remake a folk song uh, while in in traditional uh, traditional uh, uh, way the folk songs are always public domain but to prove that it's in public domain and stuff like that uh, you are not able to do that and then there are like bigger major OTTs and studios involved you have to commit on paper right so it gets a little tricky so these kind of information is not easily available as such. So you not know, like user supervisors and everyone it's the job like go out and seek them, but sometimes it gets challenging to actually find them. Yeah, that, that's it's strange to hear that the burden of proof is on you to prove that something is public domain. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Petal Savanai just uh, touched upon uh, that point uh, in agreements with OTT platforms. Can you maybe? Um, let uh, artists or licensors uh, who are not as structured as, as the majors um, know what they need to look out for while granting these licenses and the reps and the warranties that they have to make, the covenants that they have to make. Right. So, uh, Rafael, firstly, I think from the licensor side, uh, who's giving the license, uh, they really need to look at uh, what they are actually uh, licensing, you know. So which part of their right they're actually licensing when it comes to a song, you know, there are there are lyrics in it, there, are, there is composition, how Alec had, you know, initially said that what all consists in a song. And uh, when we are looking at a sound recording, you know, it has underlying literary works and so on and so forth. So uh, while we are giving those rights, of course, you know, uh, we see licenses of digital rights and, you know, satellite rights, etc. all of that. 
uh, while we do that, um, there are aspects, like I said initially earlier also that, you know, for what duration are you giving it? Uh, what is your, uh, you know, royalty that you are looking at? Who is going to collect the royalty? Is it you? Is it the IPRS? Um, then coming on to things like, uh, what are the territories? Is it a worldwide right or not? Uh, whether you have, uh, so if you are actually giving all your rights, uh, whether you can do so or not, like I said, there is a provision under law where you can't even give away your rights to collect royalty, you know. So that, uh, that dispute which is already going on between the uh, music labels and the, you know, societies, uh, where the society say that, no, they are the ones who must be collecting these royalties, but the music labels say, but the actor, I mean, the performer has already given away his rights, you know. So those kinds of uh, those kinds of obligations, if a performer is actually giving in his or her contract, uh, then that only that itself creates a lot of dispute, you know. And the and the entire contract sort of becomes, I won't say void, uh, but yes, a disputable document, which again is you know open to a lot of interpretations in the court of law. Uh, and coming on to the licensee who's going to take, uh, I think the first and foremost aspect that they look, look into and must look into is the due diligence, uh, whether it is actually, you know, their, uh, their work or not. I mean, whoever is licensing it. And uh, if it is not, then whether the chain of title is correct or not. And, uh, you know, all of that. So I think the due diligence is very important because that's where what we have seen over the years is that there will be two people who are, who are going to fight for the same song. You know, so two music labels who are, who are actually, uh, you know, claiming their rights over the same uh, underlying uh, and works and, you know, sound recording in a movie. So, uh, so to, to be able to establish that entire chain, you know, whether this is the exact person who, from whom it has to arise. I think that and of course, uh, their own rights, like it, it goes, you know, either way where what they are taking. Uh, of course, the aspect of, uh, you know, whether... Uh, the right that is being assigned is actually there or not, or the right which is being licensed is there or not. So aspects like those, I think, like I said, yeah. each uh, you know uh, contract or each deal yeah. is going to be different from the other. But these are the major parameters that I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Sim, uh, you're, you're unmuted right now, and we can all hear you. But uh, Forgive me if I was smiling so much. You, you know, saying things like chain of title was music to my ears at least. But um, now, I, I, the the big climax, Mitin. I know you're flashing there. I, I don't know how much time you're going to give us, and uh, one one more minute. So that's just one last question, and I, I think this is the climax. Uh, forgive me if it, if it does not meet your expectations, but. Um, Ankur, Alec, and anyone else who, who can answer this question, what really makes a song syncable? Uh, I know people are dying to hear this answer. So if you can let us know before we throw uh, it out to the floor to ask questions, um, what makes a song syncable? Shall I take that? Yeah, yeah Alec. Um, I'll start that. I would love to hear Ankur's. When I work on, um, I obviously have a, my own passion in music, which is right here and in my hard drive. When I work on a, when I work on a project for a, a, a client, it, it, that all goes away and I'm doing whatever the client wants and that becomes somehow my favorite music, even if it's music I would never listen to ordinarily. So I can't listen to a song out of context and say it's syncable. It's it's so amazing how how sync works, how um, music and image works, um, especially when you go to let's say the more developed markets, which then become more sophisticated in how they use music. It's not so much obvious anymore. It, it, you can use music that really juxtaposes against the visual, against the story at that moment, but somehow really works. So it's not an exact science, it's definitely an art form. So whenever I talk from, from all over the world to um, musicians, producers, labels, sync reps who send me music, uh, publishers, it's just keep doing what you do. Don't try and make it, don't try and second guess. Don't say, oh, I've made this song and uh, it uses the word thirst. And so it'd be great for a soft drinks company. Uh, mm -hmm. it, don't do that, just, just make the music when you, talking about sync just make the music you have and there'll be somewhere where it will work 
there'll be somewhere where it's the most syncable song in the world where you'll hear that everyone will hear that song on that piece of film on that clip and think nothing else will do nothing else works nothing else comes close so it's it's sorry it's not a really uh <laughs> exact climatic end but there there are songs that you can hear you can say yeah they're very syncable they sound very cool they're very catchy but they may just not work on film and I can't explain you that that's one reason why I love my job why I love what I do because it's not always easy it's not always sometimes you go through many rounds of things and you feel like a detective you know you can be also a detective finding out who owns the rights for a very old song a very uh, um, you know obscure piece of work but you can also be thinking about it at night, st staying up, can't sleep, because you, you know there's something there on the tip of your tongue, and it's, you know, somewhere in your mind, but you can't work it out. And it's often not what you would have thought, not what you would have planned for that. I, I think the exact lyrics you were looking for is nothing else matters. Uh, <laughs> in this context. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and if I could just, just add on one more thing to what Alex said, I think what makes a song or what makes, uh, you know, a, a sound recording syncable is the creative mind behind whoever is doing it. I think that's what it takes. And I think people like Alec and, you know, like people like uh, him and others that who actually make it happen, I think that's all it takes and the hard work that goes behind that. Yeah. Yeah. And, I uh, totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. My ego is a bit bigger now. Thank you. <laughs> no, but one thing even I want to add on here is that, yes, the editor or the supervisor might want to, uh, the one way of knowing whether the song is thinkable or not is just drop off the vocals uh, you know in that section of that song and the instrumental part which is left uh, you know still need to offer that. dynamic feel okay. or the commercial song yeah. so mute the vocals play the track and watch a show or a commercial in the background with the sound off I mean, that's how you will know whether it stand out on its own when it's singing and that's how when you know that yes this song has uh, done his, the, the, the song has done the justice and then you can use it whether the vocals will work it out whether the instrumental part is working out so it's not like there are like there are multiple components of a song so it's not only the lyrics which plays the biggest role when it comes to the music but also the instrumental so when you are creating the music you have to figure out all those components that yes, this can sync individually and the lyrics can be used individually because it's not one way. Like I said, that every sync opportunity is very different from one another. That's an that's an interesting interesting point. I'm, I'm not sure if the, you know the, there'll be many who will agree with it, but uh, yeah, uh, let's let's go to Ankur and I, I mean, Anisha brought up a point about uh, music editors and I, I read somewhere and I also I, I've heard from a lot of editors who uh, sometimes they musically have the final say on what will go in, uh, you know, and that comes down to the finer details. But Ankur, if we could hear from you, um, because I'm tone deaf, so I'm, <laughs> I'm doing the paper pushing, but if you, can, uh, if you can answer the question of what makes something syncable. I mean, it's a very, very difficult question to answer uh, because there is, I would say that you can't uh, consciously do that. It's like uh, what, like for instance, Alex's job is, and my job is to listen to a lot of music uh, and to know your music inside out, uh, to listen to libraries of music, to listen to songs all the time. I probably do uh like at least two two and a half hours of listening uh, almost every other day of music which is not linked to any project what i and i try and do uh, on my end is i try and get involved with projects as early as possible uh, possibly even at the script level uh, even before the visuals come in so you kind of are sinking in the project in your mind even before it's shot uh, meanwhile, you're listening to music constantly, which might not be linked to your project at all. You never know how a piece of music uh, fits uh, an image, because after all, what the supervisors around the world are trying to do is to make that visual image exciting. What we are collectively trying to do with the labels, with the musicians, with the supervisors and the directors is to make some exciting piece of moving image. 
or uh, how it fits, whether the music fits in the grain, again, whether it works against the grain. Uh, we have seen examples of amazing action sequences cut on love songs. We have seen examples of like, you know, a very fast paced song uh, playing in some sequence with you, you wouldn't have imagined. Or sometimes when you listen to music, uh, people say, well, that song is very visual. You, but you don't know where, where it's going to fit. So you, I feel that you never know. I feel uh, it's the creativity of uh, the director, the music supervisor, and the editor that comes into place. Uh, when uh, even like, you know, uh, you hear a song and you feel, okay, the introduction of that song might fit this really well. And maybe when it cuts to the part where they start singing doesn't work. So you, when you know your music really well, and when you're listening to a lot of music and you've been involved with the project for a long period of time, it organically somehow falls into place. Uh, and so I, it, I would take keep the burden of making the music syncable to the supervisors and the directors and the editors and take that burden away from the artist. And uh, I think, um... To, to sum it up, Ankur, you, you sound like you're more of the Daniel Day Lewis uh, type of music supervisor where almost the... Uh, I'll just take this as a compliment and I'll go to sleep because my day is done after this compliment. <laughs> so what I mean to say is there are method actors and there, now you sound like a method supervisor, the way you immerse yourself in a, <laughs> in, in a script and in a project. But um, I, I think at this point, we can open it up uh, to, to the floor, Mithin, if there, there are any questions uh, to people in the audience. Uh, b before, before we do that, I'd like to say, um, I know, uh, Savana, you're, you're working with a lot of artists. I, I don't know if you're open to uh, working with other artists to, um, uh, to bring them into a small library or things like that, where they can be in, and I'm talking about it, uh, my brothers and sisters in the independent uh, non-film scene here. Um, if, if you're open to working with them, Ankur, if you're open to working with them, and Alec, uh, if you're working uh, open to working with those catalogs, Savanay, if you'd be interested in collating the catalogs, I think there's a, you, there's a huge uh, snowballing effect that this could have. Uh, but uh, you know, one word answers, yes or no, from, from all of you here. Yes, of course, I do. We do believe in inclusivity and even though there's a management focus management on uh, the key talent that we manage, we do have a like, music library which we have built across artists beyond our roster. We have uh, about 300 or 50 indie songs in our library. We are pitching uh, from various electronics to single songwriters to hip hop and all kinds of genres and you know, we're just building it like a resource too for the music supervisors and the labels to be able to identify these songs for them. Okay. Um, all right. So, so, I can quickly add to that, like, you know, like it's, it's about everyone growing together. And for instance, I'm a musician myself, but 99% of times I find myself uh, pitching other people's music because it's about, uh, you know, uh, working with people. And if, if everyone does well, the industry does well, then you do well as well. Yeah. All right. Some, um, so everyone else, you can say yes together, and we'll just <laughs> we'll just end. But oh, and yes. I have a question for Mitin. Did he change his clothes? I did. I did just change my blazer. I went grab lunch. Lal lal pehna kuch badal le. So I'm going cool. Let me just change something. You're looking good. I, I told you. I told you. He was a method supervisor. He notices everything. Just, <laughs> no. I did listen to that. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you, Ankur. Uh, uh, Savane, uh, Patel, uh, Patel, and of course Anisha. But one quick thing I want to say to Alec. Alec, so sorry I missed out in announcing you while I was talking about the session. So I hope that is uh, okay. And my sincere oh, apologies for that. I was a bit late on board, so no, no worries. Yeah. That was an incredible session. And uh, I don't know if you heard this artist called uh, G. Burato. G. Burato is from Brazil. He does a lot of sync uh, placement in music and different platforms in Brazil. So if you get time, please do listen to him as well. But now, thank you so much again. Wishing you a great world, happy music day. And of course, Yoga International Day. And uh, you guys just made this platform even more beautiful. So thank you so much.